So, I mean, the digital revolution has and keeps bringing a lot of innovations and a lot of improvements to our life. It generally has changed how we communicate how, and it really has enhanced our life in many ways. But I think the, the question at stake is how do we make sure that the, the, in this new digital era we protect rights, we're mindful of protecting our own data, our privacy, we ensure that the digital world is also safe and uh, young people's rights are protected. And we have mechanisms to call out and to uh, ensure checks and balances to avoid uh, th the same uh, issues that we do offline, from discrimination to violations of human rights to hate speech. Um, so it, it's around ensuring that the digital world is as safe uh, for a young person as we try to be offline. So I mean, I think the internet has already and continues to do radically transform our social model, how we communicate, how we interact as, as, uh, as people and how decisions are made, how information is passed through. And I think especially young people are the ones who benefited the most and are, have grown into this internet world and being digital natives. And it's radically transformed how they interact uh, uh, between themselves, between different regions of the world. It's made the world a playground. Uh, and through globalization and the internet, young people are able to, to have conversations all over the world, have connections and be able to build networks much more efficiently than previous generations. But it also comes with certain issues that are still not, we haven't figured out, issues around data pri privacy, protection, uh, human rights online, hate speech, how do we deal? It's, it's all around ensuring that technology keeps enhancing our society while providing safe spaces, especially for our young people. I think one of the challenges of our generation is that uh, young people generally participate in a lot of very different ways through social media, through the internet, through technology, and our formal systems are not able to grasp that forms of participation. So I think it's, it's two-sided, right? It's our administrations and our governments need to innovate in the way in ways which they capture that youth, part, that youth participation. And young people, while still revolutionizing all those conversations, still need to understand that until governments catch up, voting and formal procedures of participating are still necessary. But um, generally, yes, there is a challenge around how young people's voices are captured or not. Obviously, uh, social media, uh, internet, new technologies, boycotting products, boycotting industries is a, a way of participation much more close to home for young people today. Uh, but governments are still haven't been able to crack that code. There are some a lot of good examples across the world and in Europe especially where governments are moving towards more participatory mechanisms of policy making, using social media to grasp opinions or to pose questions and, and interact much more. But I think it's still one of those tensions of well, it's going to be a generational challenge of our time. Uh, so I think youth organizations and young people especially are leading that conversation and should be provided spaces within governments to make sure that we create structures that work. Generally with the European elections one of the big mistakes is that we try to tailor made a one size fits all for the entire Europe and we have to understand that Europe is made of many nationalities, languages, realities, so creating micro campaigns that are able to uh, grasp the local context while still making a connection to Europe is I think the way to go. Like one European campaign from Brussels will not fit for 500 million citizens. So I think young people need to be creative around how to connect the daily issues of their struggles and their lives to Euro European agendas. Political parties need to first of all start including young competent people in the lists and, and in the parties which create that emotional connection and young people feel that they are represented by young faces. The political parties need to start addressing issues that are important to young people uh, and, and speak in a language that is understandable uh, to young people. Sometimes it feels that you really need to be a technical expert to understand elections and political parties need to make an effort to come down and, and speak the language of young people and include issues uh, around school, education, university, or participation, or employment, or housing that, that really come close to the heart. I think um, because there's such an imbalance of representation of elder generations in the political system, young people don't feel that they're represented or that their voice could count. So 
making sure that young people themselves mobilize and organize themselves much better to reach policymakers through technology and through youth organizations, but also pushing political parties to change the narrative and innovate in the ways that they listen to the needs of young people, I think that's going to be the key.